Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a brand new, it's a brand new Monday. The a whole week of music has passed us by and we're here for a brand new podcast. Welcome everybody with a really special guest today, John Wendell from Little Man Tate. How are you doing, mate? You're on eight. I'm very well, mate. You? It's a, I'm, I'm happy to see you, mate. I, I can't no. complain, mate. Lockdown, lockdown has been quite good to me, really. I can't really complain. I'm, I'm really bored now and I'm ready to yeah. spread my wings. I'm a little bit... I'm, feel, I'm feeling a bit weird about going out because I'm working yeah. from home as well at the minute. Yeah. So I'm starting a little bit like, it's going to be a bit weird, but I'm just going to yeah. force myself to go out at every opportunity and just get back into the swing of things. That's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, th- thanks for jo- I'm going to start right from the beginning, John. Okay. And I'm, okay. And I'm going back to Carousel Moon here. Okay. Um, what, what were first, the moon or Carousel Moon? Remind me. Uh, uh, so me and Mars, we started uh, a band called Carousel Moon when we were hmm. 15, 15, wow. I played rhythm guitar, um, I went and singer, just the guitarist, just the guitarist, just just the <laughs> rhythm guitarist, I went not even the guitarist. I used to play rhythm um, guitar in our band at all and it, it's, it's yeah, the easiest yeah. job in it. <laughs> exactly, exactly, you feel like you're in a band, yeah. Um, <laughs> So yeah, so went into that and then we changed the name um, and then I went on lead vocals back then, like just um, would have been late 90s, early noughties. Um, and then uh, went through that, we were playing gigs in pubs, you know, doing covers or things like that. Yeah. Um, trying, to, trying to earn, trying, well, just trying to fund trying to fund a band um, yeah. and then uh, just playing to like rent a mob, trying to get all your mates down and mm. what have you. I can, um, I, can rem- I can remember back in the boardwalk days when just seeing a massive poster with your band on it and loads yeah. of like gig dates and thinking, how oh, the fucking hell have they done that coming out of Sheffield? <laughs> they're, they're doing well for themselves, <laughs> that band, because they're getting yeah, out of no, no, tours no, no. and stuff. <laughs> There were nobody at gigs. We just booked <laughs> a load. We just booked, <laughs> just booked a load of pubs. Can we have a yeah. gig? Can we have a gig? Um, so yeah, so there weren't much. Uh, it was just I don't know. We we're just young, just thinking we were going to be. Uh, yeah. we we're going to be rock and roll stars. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, on last week's podcast, I was speaking to Ed Cousins, and yeah. we were just looking at a gig. And when when there when Reverend of the Makers used to be Jude and Suke. Back in the yep. days, we had a good reminisce about the boardwalk days and just how good that venue was and how much of a loss it is to Sheffield. Yeah. What can you yeah. remember back in the days of Sheffield, uh, being around, you know, bands, up and starting bands like Revenue and the Makers and Milburn and all the other ones? What kind of memories do you have from those days? Yeah, well, obviously me and Maz worked um, at the boardwalk. Mm. We worked on the box office, like yeah. um, just taking £3.50 off everybody. And- yeah tickets and what have you um and i know ed and john um alex and andy work behind the bar mm. um sam from dead like how he worked behind the bar um uh and uh, obviously like all those bands were always in and out uh, watching other bands mm. you just started to kind of sense like there were a feeling that bands going to watch other bands but then also he started people started coming to gigs you know like mm. just going out like before you were seeing bands like you're having to drag your mates down like yeah. was obviously being one of them um and then just around that time it kind of felt like it was starting to change people were just turning up at gigs gigs were starting to sell out it was I mean i'm the i mean like when arctic monkeys were playing then it was mm. rammed and it was bouncing and um yeah i mean it, it was it just it it kind of just felt like there was something bubbling under i mean the, you know those bands didn't become successful by accident mm. they became successful because they worked hard they were talented and they'd got good songs and good live shows and that so i mean I mean, you don't, I mean, like when you look at John as a front man, for example, mm. he's, he's, you, you want to watch him, you, you know what I mean? And, and I think that kind of, that kind of got people talking and, and. You mean John McClough? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. so you'd, you'd want to watch him as a front man. You'd want to watch Alex as a 
as Alex Turner was mm. a front man, obviously, and and Joe and like you know all these bands. They, they had they, they it didn't just happen by accident. They had they worked good bands with yeah. you know good front men, good good songs, um, and people like connected with it. Um, you know, it was like was you know it wasn't just luck. It was hard work as well. Mm. Like you say, when you look at when you look at John, it's like. With June and Ed, with June and Suki before, um, before Revenant Makers and what have you, and and obviously, so it's kind of like you just go through, you go through a process and kind of evolve, don't you? And then yeah. you find, you find what you what you are, um, and then you know, like we we knew our limitations, kind of thing. <laughs> we knew, we knew. Okay. just just bang out a decent tune with a yeah. with a with a with a good riff and uh, try and get a big chorus. Um, so I think we just we just made the most of us as in Little Man Tape made the most of mm. what limited ability we've got. Right. Okay. You, you mentioned earlier you just wanted you were just young at some points and you just wanted to be rock and roll stars. What was yeah. um was, was there a lot of egos flying about at that time when you when you would see these bands around you? What 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 were the relationships like with I don't know with other front men around at that time? Maybe you yeah. and John. I've heard yeah, a few rumors. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We so um yeah, it's, it's it's silly now when you look when I look back on it. It's quite you know I think look at some of the things that I might have said or mm. some of the things John might have said, and it's kind of like you just you're young and like say big egos. You all want to be the the, the the biggest and the best and um, and yeah, i you know looking back on that now, it's, it's embarrassing. I said it's that I regret like some of the stupid things that I said as a as a as a young bloke, you know, trying to make his way. And I know mm. I know no John's I know John's the same. And we like we start bump into him all the time, like um, Matt is uh, on um, on on the park and stuff. And mm. my partners. Uh, son goes to the same school as oh, as, okay. as, as yeah. so so yeah so it's kind of just kind of have a laugh about it but bump into bumped into him the other day just as we were coming one way he was coming the other and Chris Wilson was coming the other oh, way wow. all at the same time <laughs> like well I've got a minute so we ended up being stood in Encliffe Park for about oh, wow. forty minutes chatting about. Old, you know, old times kind but of thing. Old yeah, if anybody doesn't yeah, know, yeah. Chris Wilson was the the main promoter from the boardwalk back in the day uh, with Barney Vernon. They were the like the yeah. they were the people to get in with, weren't they? Because they were so influential yeah. and so yeah. so good yeah. at what they did. Um, uh, they were just yeah. great. Yeah, yeah. So that, that, that's all good to know. And and, and I think you know, if, if I look back at a couple of years ago, there's always there's still things that you do and you say that you. Yeah, you think when you get to forty-two, like me, that you'd know you'd have it all sorted, but it just don't yeah. get sorted, does it? Sometimes it's, it's, it's difficult, isn't it? We're all going to drop bollocks for as long as what mistakes. we live, aren't we? Yeah, that's it. That's <laughs> it. You make mistakes, I you recover from a minute. And, yeah, exactly. You know, like I hold my hands up and say, yeah, I was a bit of a dick sometimes, but um, trying to be less of a dick as I get older. But yeah, <laughs> we, we keep we. Like, <laughs> it's not always that either. <laughs> Fair enough. So one one thing I um I noticed that I, I saw in an interview recently you said that after your gigs you, you always had the appetite to go out drinking with the fans that came to see you at your gigs and yeah. that were kind of a unique selling point for Little Man Tape really. Not a lot of other bands are doing that, and I don't mean like just your friends that came to see you and you flogged a few tickets yeah. to genuine fans of the band that followed you throughout the country and you did, you know, you liked yeah. to drink and then you went out after the gig and really got to know the fans. I thought that was quite a unique yeah. thing that you did. Yeah, I was kind of like, um, like I said, we knew we were in like a privileged position to have mm. people who who wanted to see us and wanted to, to know who, who, who we were and what we were about and things. And um, I just kind of thought, you know, <laughs> We're no different, like we're no different to mm. the guys who are coming to see us. It's kind of we just got lucky, you know. I mean, like there was there's there was, there's so many bands out there that you know just are fantastic. Like you, mm. you know, coming from Sheffield, how many great bands there are even now and things. And it's you know we were just one of the ones that got picked up. You know, mm. it's, they were just not as lucky, not as fortunate as as we were. I mean. You, it's not like saying, I don't know, whatever, however many bands got signed, says six, like, you know, yeah. weren't like, we weren't like 
little man take with the sixth best band in Sheffield yeah. or anything. It's just that we got we got lucky and got that opportunity to play as music to to bigger audiences and and, that, and get to have the experiences we had. A lot of people, and uh, well, and, and me personally, I saw it firsthand. I can remember you and Ben from the band coming down to one of our gigs of the sound gig down yeah. at it yeah. used to, a little venue outside at Globe. It's a restaurant now. What did that used to be called? Uh, not Tim, wait, Tim, not Tim Panalo. No, 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 no. Uh, just at right uh, at Globe yeah, at I, University. I, I I Shears, what, is, yeah. is it Shear Smith's or something now? But it's, it's like a posh restaurant now, but it used to be yeah. a music venue. Yeah, yeah. With that one where you had to sell your LPA and that. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. absolute <laughs> shambles, yeah. <laughs> you were one of them. Yeah, I remember, I remember that. <laughs> Best ones. Yeah, we, we always appreciate it. said, Little Man Tates in crowd, and I'm like, oh, yeah, nice one. So you, you were like, you were you were out a lot, which is, you know, yeah. <laughs> but you were always out Sorry. supporting. Go on. Yeah, we just always obsessed, weren't we? <laughs> yeah, like... no, yeah, it's a big theme of the podcast. <laughs> any opportunity, any opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> well, we saw you and Ben were out. I think Mars as well. I can't remember, really remember. I might have made that bit up. But um, yeah, we, we always supported, you know, you, we always appreciated you being out at other bands' gigs and supporting their bands. And they, there was a big community. And I think Sheffield's still got yeah. that kind of community where people yeah. do support other bands and you know there's the Washington at end at night where everybody used to go before lockdown yeah. to have a drink after their gigs and just you know crack wise to the early hours of the morning that kind of relationship yeah, yeah. is still there with Sheffield it's quite unique that isn't it yeah 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 no it is I think um I do think that was that was a massive thing because the, the it, it, it's none of the you know like you said before about the, with the egos and the bands before before the bands started getting inside of things and they felt like they were that almost bit of you know competition because there was only so much because there were a lot of Sheffield bands getting shoved down the world's throats mm. at that time um, so there was a bit of a backlash you know from like the enemy and other you know various you know like radio one and things like yeah. that it was they couldn't play everybody um but before that it was always that the, the bands were always out and and just going to each other's gigs and going out like at the, the end of the night going out after finishing work and um and i think that state that stays i think it's just like i think it's just a really good community that like the 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 sheffield like music community i think um it's kind of it's not as snobby as some uh as, as as some cities can be with the music if you know the bands aren't this kind of like, I, 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 I live in manchester now john and it's completely different here it's not like yeah. that here yeah yeah that's it's, it's like i think with the um with the with the sheffield thing it's like i wouldn't go and see a band and be like ah oh, well I'm, I'm i'm not that impressed with that it's not used a D suspended flipping. I ain't got a clue. I just know, yeah. you know, I won't have a clue. Just like take it for what it is and yeah. appreciate it for what it is. And I guess if you if you're a good band and you you're all right, then you then all right people. That's you sound by yeah. sound by me kind of thing. Sure. Well, I can remember reading in another. I've been doing some research and I've read another interview. Yeah, that yeah. I, did recently, I, don't, I never know what's going to come up. So I never know what I've said in the past. <laughs> it's all right. Well, you mentioned that you'd prefer to have four gigs rather than selling records yeah yeah so um so was that a bit of a you know it, 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 is that what the record companies obviously don't like to see yeah <laughs> you know, more ticket sales than uh record sales because the more money's in your pocket rather than theirs is, is that a, yeah is that a fair thing to to see? yeah i think a lot of the, a lot of all that changed didn't it because mm. basically when when we broke um it was just it was the start of like the the MySpace thing yeah. and um and kind of I remember like through learning from the past when we were in other bands and we were making um we were like getting hundred CDs hundred CDs who's gonna buy hundred CDs <laughs> <I know. laughs> well obviously so like but so getting hundred CDs yeah. off um, printed and trying to sell them at four quid a you know, a gig and whatever, and you're basically just your mates anyway who are just yeah. bit buying them and they've already paid to come and see you. And then we started, I think people, we, the, the the bands got wise to like, well, aren't we better giving this music away? Mm. Like, and then people getting into the music and then hopefully start coming to the show. So yeah. 
so that's that's kind of like what we started doing with the MySpace thing, just getting getting our music up there. I mean, like if you look, the, the first sort of Mante albums just all re-records of the of the demos we gave away. Mm. Um, so that so that had a knock-on effect. So our record sales and chart positions at the time didn't reflect the size of the gigs we were doing mm. because a lot of people didn't buy the songs because they'd already got mm. them got them in the first place and when we gave them yeah. away uh, in the first place. So I think a lot of the Sheffield bands were quite at the forefront of that, you know, like um, obviously because of good management and mm. and having savvy people around them, um, we kind of, we were, we, you know, started started selling tickets. So, it's, you know, I mean, I, mm. I think the first, the first time we really noticed anything was, We'd, was, we'd put a gig on at the Grapes. We were playing the gig at the Grapes and it, the tickets sold from Jack, Jack, Jack's Records. Jack's Records, yeah. Yeah. And the, yeah, yeah. And, and the, they used to sell tickets for like the local promoters. Didn't mm. they? And, um, and it sold. We, we sold I, I think it was only like thing. We sold a gig without having to drag his nan and grandpa's down and what have you. So yeah. it's like, um, started to notice that then. So it, it progressed, you know, you got, you got a record deal, you know, the holy grail that every band dreams of playing, was it Leeds Reading Festival? The, the yeah. biggest stages that you can possibly play. How, yeah. how, how was that progressing to that for you after, you know, no offence or help, but the grapes and the ballwalk size venues and then these big massive stages? Yeah, it was uh, hard work in terms mm. of trying to trying to fill it. Where you just start looking, at <laughs> just four of us on this massive yeah. stage, and you having you wanting to try and engage and and move about. Um, uh, it was it was it, it happened really quick. So mm. like you didn't really get a chance to take it all in as as much as you you wish wish you wish you could. Mm. Um, I think. With the label, um, when we signed to we signed to B two, and we were on our way down to play uh, Barfly in London, um, and we we knew we knew there'd been like bits of interest from record labels because we'd had to go and have a meeting with a mm. with a solicitor, a lawyer, you know, music lawyer and things. So we knew, but as management, we're quite you know kind of like didn't want to. The, Keep keep it on the down low kind of thing from us because obviously we'd shit ourselves if we knew like <laughs> we'd got flipping um, record labels rocking yeah. up. <clears throat> and uh, I can remember we were on the drive down to London and um, and I, he he was in the front with uh, the guy who like tour managed us at the time basically like <laughs> just looked after us and made sure we didn't mm. kill ourselves. Um, <laughs> he. Um, he he, and he was on, he was in the front on the phone and I could just keep hearing bits of the conversation. Put phone and he's like, right, we're going to uh, we're going to uh, meet some people at V Two Records. I'm like, right, flipping heck, sound. Mm -hmm. So went in. I wouldn't know how advanced things were. Went in. Um, it was like an old big old big old house. Um, now went in. Obviously, secretary people there. Took us down into the um, into like the the basement of this of of the of of the house. Like I say, it was a big house, um, and it was there was a bar, like a, a downstairs bar. And at the time, it was where everybody was writing to Magnus, like, and uh, they got all Magnus out to see you. We were drinking Magnus. <laughs> there were like a team of about. 40 people so like there was the A&R the, the marketing department the MD yeah. everybody and they were just like talking to us what you just everyone firing questions without like, flipping out what's going on like yeah. I think we were all like I can't what is going on so they were like um oh yeah do you want to um you know where do you see yourself being what do you want you know what what are you expecting how many songs you got mm. we've like got seven we're like oh we've got about 30 <laughs> and then um, oh, what have you then they were like right well we're all coming to the show tonight so it so we'll yeah. you know we'll we'll catch up then so we're like flipping next come to the um 
come to the they come to the gig, and um, we uh, we 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 played the gig, and um, afterwards the the guy um, Steely were called. He's like, I've got it's like proper old school. He's like, I've got a record deal in my pocket for you lot. So we're like flipping out. So obviously, like his managers are. Right. So he obviously didn't, he, he was obviously just like a figure of speech. But then they yeah. obviously negotiated with the lawyers. But while this was going on, while the, while this there's a few couple of weeks uh, in between, in, you know, yeah. between first off, you know, the first offer they made, mm. and then obviously the solicitors kind of battle it out or whatever for for what you want and stuff, which we just wanted. To, we'd have just been like, oh, yeah, 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 let's just get <laughs> yeah, it started. Yeah. So while that was going going on, um, a record label called Be Unique, another record label. I think it's, I think Kaiser Chiefs were signed to him because uh, they're like, oh, we want to come and see you. Um, because they've been to see us a few times. We want to come and see you in a, in a practice room in Sheffield. So we're like, right. So the, to the, the, the head of A&R had seen us loads. So she brought down, I don't know, whoever it was, the, 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 another guy. So they came down and he's like, comes and he introduces himself to us. We're all set up in practice room and that. He's like, yes, well, I want to listen to your tracks. Just play like you're playing a gig. I'm thinking you, just, you can't do that. It's impossible. <laughs> nah, is that so? Just you know, just play like you like you you're doing a gig, and then um, we'll take you out for a drink and something to eat after, and we can have a chat. So we're like, all right, sounds. So we bang through set and everything, and he says to us, uh, oh, "Yeah, right, brilliant. Thanks for that, lads. I've just uh, I've just had a text, and I've got to shoot back to London, so I'm not going to be able to uh, uh-huh. not to be able not to be able to take you out for a drink. But we'll uh, we'll be in touch. That uh, sound. Never heard a thing from him again. So like, obviously, <laughs> right, he just okay. thought, what a load, what a load of shy <laughs> that were. So, uh, so yeah, well, they, so we they, they, they didn't set themselves up for the best, like in the best way, though, like, did they? Because you, hey, you can't you, it, you can't do a proper gig in a rehearsal room, and it, it's not no, set up. Right. Just, it sounds going to be shit. You feel like a knobhead, don't you, yeah. bouncing about yeah. like to like one one bloke and uh, but yeah, so uh, that happened. But it's assigned to D two, and then yeah. like I say, it it just started going off, making music videos. The ve- the venues were getting bigger, yeah. the fan base were getting bigger. Just just had a had a like the right time doing it. The problem were at the time because you're in it, you don't appreciate it as much as you would do when you yeah. look look at it now um so, so it's good yeah. to be back to to appreciate all this time and and yeah. and, and check it in so the so the the band did whatever it did it and it, it kind of felt like and, and you the band presented it as like a coming towards a natural end at the time it did yeah and and again you know i can hear i can remember quotes from you just saying you wanted to go out at the top which you did yeah what kind of conversation what were the conversation as a band like before you before you all admitted it to yourself that you know it's time to pack it in type thing yeah this is the i think some of this i really regret because i think i was the catalyst for for wanting to stop um and then I just kind of felt at the time I was like, what why am I not enjoying this? Like this is this isn't this isn't how it should be. We've got you know, we're we're in such a privileged position and and I'm and I'm not enjoying it. It was like and I I don't know, it's it's really hard to explain, but it was just like we don't we can't are we gonna get any bigger? Really, if we're not gonna be the big one of the biggest bands around, what's the point? Kind of mm. thing. Just looking at it all all yeah. completely wrong and we were you know it was getting harder to write we were getting on each other's nerves we spent a lot of time together mm. we were you know touring traveling partying too hard which obviously doesn't help but you know we, we never our days off we never had days off to recuperate we'd just go straight back out and mm. you know and um and so it, me and Maz had a big talk about it and he was kind of like yeah you know we were kind of on the same page um but dan and bad dan and ben didn't want it to end when it did um but i think a lot of the pressure lied on me and maz you know to write the songs 
to mm. do the interviews. Not that they wouldn't have done that, but it just always seemed like it was me, me and Maz were doing the interviews, me and Maz were doing the writing, and it became. I think it just became a. It just became difficult for me and him. Um, mm. And uh, that starts to really feel the pressure when you've got A and R. You know, we need four B sides for the for the for for one single, so they could do different things to help. The, you know, so obviously yeah. chart position, chart position, all that stuff. Um, I think, I think it just got like, well, is this? <laughs> I'd rather just have a normal job. Mm. But until we got normal jobs, and then we wish we were in a band. <laughs> <laughs> but, but like it was, uh, I think it was just it just all got a bit. All just got a bit much, and we were we weren't being how we should be, and yeah. the, the live sh- shows to an extent was was suffering, the, the songwriting was suffering, um, but yeah, it's it just it just felt like we just lost that we just lost that buzz and. Yeah. Um, what year, what year we've got was it? Back, we've got it back now. Oh, I know, I know. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I, it's coming. It's coming. I've got the section on. Yeah. It's coming back in a bit. What what year was it that you decided to stop then? 2009. 2009. Okay. 2009. I can remember we were coming back from um, Amsterdam. We'd been mm. playing. We'd been playing in Holland. Uh, no, was it Holland or was it Germany? Hang on. No, we were. Yeah, we'd been playing in Germany, and it was the last. It was the last time we'd be going away with the banks. Once we got back, we'd only got the two Sheffield shows. Yeah. And it was almost like, it, it was strange because it was like the biggest relief. Like, we're never going to be, we're never going to have to do that again. We're never going to have to do that again. And and it felt like, a, at that point, yeah. it felt like a relief. But like I say, then we got real jobs, had, had to learn how to have a real life and be yeah. grown up and, you know, but, <laughs> Put his own socks on and that, yeah. And uh, and it was and and um, it was strange because really it should have been quite quite a sad moment, but it, it yeah. kind of wasn't. And then the same with the same with the final two shows. It just felt this is the right thing to yeah. do. And the last two shows were, were, were amazing. The crowd made it amazing. We we were buzzing off it. And then I think it just I like I say, as as you look back on it, as you get older, you think, why did we do that? Why did yeah. we just take a break? Why did we just have six months off or something? Um, mm. but, but yeah, it took us twelve years. To, twelve years. Twelve years. So when I when I originally messaged you, I said we can use this podcast as a bit of promotion to vlog some tickets for these two new gigs, but you don't need to now because no, it's sold no, out, mate. It's sold out. <laughs> yep, that's it. There you go. <laughs> I can see it. So you waited twelve years and then. This fucking virus turns up <laughs> and, timing, and, it? and delays it, delays it a little <laughs> bit more. What was because I, I, I saw just from online and just following Little Man Tate on Facebook and stuff that you know, rehearsals had already started, hadn't they? And then, yeah, uh, you were well underway, you know, things were just, yeah. you know, the, 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 the night was it because it was originally going to be one night and then that sold out quite quick, so you made it two nights, yeah. you? so it's all good, yeah. So, what, what's the what, what, what were the first meeting when you when you rocked up to that? Uh, rehearsal room when you were all together and you just played that first song what was that like after all this time uh, was that shit how we're going to do this <laughs> 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 I can't remember anything yeah. um, nah, if, well we'd obviously we got approached we've been approached a few times but then we mm. got we got asked about it in, in January and it kind of felt like well why not if, if we're going to do it you know because we've, we've talked about it yeah. and then it was a case of it's one of them to get the band back together. Yeah. It's uh, so well, like I'm, I'm like right, okay. So obviously, I thought right, who's going to be the hardest to convince? So yeah. I was like, well, Maz is going to be the hardest to convince. So start, I thought, right, start with him then. No, I started with other two. <laughs> oh, right, okay. <laughs> well, we're gonna. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're gonna we're gonna do it, Mars. If you don't, you know, yeah. we, we we wouldn't have done it without Mars. Yeah. But but no, I thought I thought Mar, I thought oh no, this Mars might be the sticking point because obviously he lives in London now. But he was like, mm-hmm. now he, he was up for it. Um, I was up for it because it's always been it, me and Mars that haven't wanted to do it. But then mm-hmm. this time we wanted we wanted to do it, and it felt right. Um, you know, and the. Um, as kids are all asking us to do it as well, which is like... Yeah, they want to see what they want there. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, they, like, I mean, Dan's oldest now, she was only really little when uh, 
the first time round. Obviously, I didn't have kids at that point or mm-hmm. Mazza. Um, and um, and so then once we we got talking, then we had the you know the Zoom meetings and yeah. chatting and and what have you. And then it just it was like right, we're going to do it. So we started like just leaking little bits like on we didn't, none of us know any logins for the old Facebook yeah, pages, right, okay. the old mailing list or anything. So we had to like <laughs> start from scratch again. Yeah. Um, but the first meeting at the at, at the at the practice room, it were it like like we'd never like we'd never mm. been away apart yeah. from being rusty as anything. It yeah. was like you know just banging out songs and surprising how tight we were. Yeah, compared to but we all just listened to his own music anyway. So <laughs> yeah, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> just stick yeah. the whole album back on stream. Yeah, stick album on and yeah. sit back. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> that's 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 the worst thing because you're listening to you mm. you're having to play your music all the time to remember uh, yeah to remember things. So I'm like flipping. What you like with got, the lyrics these days? Remembering them? It's st- still bad. This is why I have to do. <laughs> I have to do that. So I'm on Echo Soul Road. Get one of them things with uh, lyrics on in front of you. You'll have one of them, won't you? Or a little yeah, screen yeah. telling you what lyrics are. Yeah, I'll just have somebody there in front of me. And I, oh, okay. <laughs> and, um, the uh, we um, I'm on I'm on Ecclesall Road, and I'm going to practice. I'm thinking, right, well, well, I'm going to. Um, it, it was it was just obviously it was still warm, so it was busy. It was busy, yeah. even though it was like coming out of lockdown or what have you. But I'm like listening to tunes, thinking, um, you know, thinking, all oh, right, I've got. I've got I mean, got to learn these words again. Yeah. So I'm there and, I'm, and I've, I've, I've got it on quite loud and I'm thinking, hang on a minute. I'm, st- I'm st- sat there in car at traffic lights, sat- singing Listen sexy to music. Like, <laughs> myself, <laughs> my, uh, my own song. I can't think, what am I doing? I can't be doing this. She's like, <laughs> what are you? Oh, I was like, flipping heck, I can't believe it. I, I just weren't thinking. I'm thinking, I can't believe I've just been sat. It was busy. just research. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Well, nobody would have recognised us anyway. Nobody thought <laughs> anyone knows who we are anyway, so it would have been all right. So how are you feeling about these gigs then coming up? Because I'm, I'm there on the Friday. Yep. I'm on the Friday one, so uh, just proper looking forward to it, mate. What what kind yeah. of, without any spoilers or anything, what kind of, what can you say about the gig? Yeah, well, a lot of thoughts gone into it because we've had like mm. a year to like, <laughs> yeah. the plan, but it's going to be big. It's like... Um, we want it to be like we want it to be an event so we're kind of there's hopefully going to be a bit more to it than just us mm. you know just sure. you know it's good it's it's got like it's going to be pure little man take basically it's going to yeah. be we've got to have the energy one of the things we said when we we're doing it is we can't we can't turn up and be flipping 38 year old bloke and mm. or 42 year old bloke or whatever you know we've got to be little man take mm. 2006 to 2009 so yeah. so we, it's got to have the energy so we're like trying to get fit um and obviously it's, it's difficult because we were going to play in that size venues after playing 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 yeah. playing playing and building his way up i mean like we've not played for 12 years and we just and then we've got to go to that size size gig and just hope it all just kind of. Comes are you going back, all? Are you but... going all flaming lips then? Or what? Oh, it's, it's <laughs> going to be. <laughs> it's uh, it's it's not it's not to be too, it's not to be it's not to be over the top or self indulgent <laughs> or anything, but it's got to be. It's got to be. It's got to have that. Right. That little man say energy, the good yeah. lights, you know, the the the, the build up to the mm. gig, you know, good supports, you know, yeah. good, you know, the tunes in between, the 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 bands and stuff have, have got to be, um, have got to, you know, it's it's just the way it builds, mm. and then we walk out and we absolutely smash it, and I don't forget any words, and <laughs> Maz don't Maz don't mess up any guitar bits like he did at the last gig where are we going drinking after uh wedge band oh i can't say yet oh yeah we can't say it oh is it is there going to be a, a play is, is there going to be another announcement soon yeah so there's there's going to be after there's going to be an after like an official after show and stuff yeah. um but obviously i'll i'll get you on there uh, i'll fill you in before yeah before there's a message over about it. that mate and we'll yeah yeah, yeah. 
I'll dig right into that. If I if I can get back into my good drinking days, I've got a bit rubbish at it because I've been I ain't been drinking as much these days. But it's definitely harder, isn't it? Yeah. It's definitely harder. Those uh, three four days hangovers are just a real yeah man. man. I know I, it's it's de- it is a lot harder. What how, how's that happen? How's that happen? Just old. That's what I built up a right tolerance. <laughs> <laughs> we, did, we, we 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 did try, didn't we, to build up that tolerance? We we gave it a good go over the years. Yeah. Um, yeah, but yeah, yeah just it, age it, it, creeps up, and we just have to settle down a bit. Yeah, it do, it just like seems to happen. Yeah, but I, I think it does help though, not flipping neck in sambucas and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, and everything else, that horrible acid <laughs> and go oh, flipping well, egg. Mate, John, really appreciate your time for this interview. Proper looking forward to the October dates at Auto Academy in Sheffield. Um, and yeah, really appreciate your time, mate. Thank you. Absolute pleasure, mate. No problems. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers.